Hello, my name's Eric and welcome to the Big Man's Outdoors. I am doing my next video, I guess I'm going to call it Phase 3, uh, on the Sierra 90 Grain Match King load development that I've been doing with the 224 Valkyrie. Um, my goal for this is repeatability. So, uh, in Phase 2, Phase 1 and Phase 2, I was working on trying to find something that would shoot well. Um, if you're following along on my 95 grain Sierra Match King series, I am doing a method called the Satterley Load Development Method. Um, this is not it. I don't know what the technical term for this particular way to load develop, but it basically consists of just looking at the load data. I'm looking at the charge weights within the range min and max and uh, for me it, you just pick a couple uh, I usually start somewhere or I look at somewhere around max maybe go a couple tenths of a grain lower um, and then maybe a half a grain lower than that maybe a half a grain lower than that somewhere in that range just pick a couple charges within the min max range and load up five rounds shoot them at 100 yards and see how they group uh, if they group good, it might be something you want to keep. If not, you might need to keep looking. So, uh, phase one and two was about that. And again, this phase is about, now that I've got something that I liked, uh, can I repeat it? And is it still going to group? And are my velocities and groups consistent? Because if I can do something once in reloading, that's great. But if I can't do it again, it really doesn't benefit me in any way, shape, or form. So what I saw in phase two, I was shooting reloader 16 and H4350. Uh, I ended up liking the 26.8 grain loads for both of these. And uh, that's what I wanted to give a try. So, again, I talk about in the Phase 2 video with Reloader 16 that there is no manufacturer or any load data out there for Reloader 16 for the 224 Valkyrie, as far as I know. Uh, I checked the Alliance load. I checked the Alliance website prior to making this video, and they do not have anything for the 224 Valkyrie listed for Reloader 16, but they don't have anything listed for Reloader 17 for the 224 Valkyrie as well. Um, Reloader 17 data for me is listed on the Sierra website for their bullet. So they do have um, Reloader 17 as a viable powder. I know you can't see that, but uh, as a powder for the 90 grain Sierra Match King. So again, I talk a little bit more about how I came to pick my charges in phase two but again like what I was seeing wanted to give it a try um, as far as my rifle uh, I'm shooting a 24 inch bull barrel and an upper that I got from AR-15 part it's a one in seven twist barrel the lower is an Anderson manufacturing strip lower I bought a local gun shop just put a mil spec lower parts kit in there that's all that's underneath it. Um, got an acting machine 6x24 scope on the top. That's really it. Um, nothing special about it, but I like it. It's been shooting well for me and it seems to continue to shoot well for me, so I'm happy with it. Alright, so as far as what I'm loading, I'm using factory brass from Federal um, originally they came from factory loads that I was shooting when I first got my rifle and I was working on just trying to get it sighted in, seeing how it was performing with factory ammo. So this is twice fired. I am trying to use the same brass or I am using the same brass over and over because I've got a different video series that I'm running on brass life for the 224 for these federal factory uh, pieces of brass. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check that out. I'm obviously using the Sierra 90 grain Match King bullet. I'm using 
Winchester small rifle primers uh, to set it off and obviously H4350 and Reloader 16. This is, again, like I said, there's no date out there for the, the Reloader 16, so it was an experiment. Seems to be going well. Uh, I ended up, my goal was to load 10 rounds of each uh, H4350 at 26.8 grains and Reloader 16 at 26.8 grains. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention was I'm loading them at a cartridge overall length of 2.30 inches. That's my magazine can take a round that long, and that also seems to be the bullet jump. Uh, I think it's it's twenty thousandths of an inch jump for this ninety grain Sierra Match King when loaded at a case overall length, or sorry, cartridge overall length of two thirty, and rifle seems to like that. I haven't tried every variation, but there's only so much I can do, so I'm just going to stick with that until it don't work and then maybe adjust it if I need to. So again 10 rounds of each but I didn't follow my own public service announcement and when I went to seat my first Reloader 16 round uh, the last thing I had uh, loaded on the press was a 95 grain Sierra Match Kings I didn't back my seating die my seating stem back off and I loaded it too short. So that round goes into my box of shame. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll get it figured out. I don't know. We'll see. So I don't think that there is anything else that I have to add in the in intro. Let's go ahead and take a look at the range shooting video, and then we'll come back and discuss results. It's the one that screws the group up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our targets. Um, maybe I can get these to stick to this and it'll actually yeah, that looks like it might work. So, there's my target for the reloader um, 16. I've got a 0.91 inch group, 0.87 MOA. I have a low velocity of 27.17, a high velocity of 27.50, average of 27.35, extreme spread of 32.72, and a standard deviation of 9.63. So, those are good numbers, I think. Uh, my velocities are up where they need to be uh, in the 2700s, which is where I want them for this round. Um, my group size is under an MOA, shooting at 100 yards. Uh, uh, for me, MOA is the goal. MOA are better. Uh, I'll take that all day. Don't necessarily think I'm that particularly good of a shooter that I uh, can consistently do better than that. So again, 
MOA groups are the goal. Maybe someday I will be, I don't know. But I'm just trying to keep my expectations realistic for me. So that's the Reloader 16 group. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the H4350 group. So this one, again, the H4350 was uh, nine rounds. All of those I got chronograph readings. The H4350 is ten rounds. I only got chronograph readings for the last eight. Uh, the first two I shot over the chronograph. Uh, my chronograph had turned a little bit. I was using a, I'm using a Beta Max, Beta Master. I'm using a Chrony, a Beta Master, I think it's called. Um, and it had shifted a little bit on my tripod, so my first two rounds, I didn't get readings on. So I did, but I did get eight good readings. Um, this is a 1.4 inch group, 1.33 MOA. <laughs> I did pull one. Um, which is unfortunate because the other nine were 0 0.8, I just wanted to group them for the heck of it, 0 0.81, 0 0.77 MOA. So, wish I had that shot back. I mean, what's on paper is what's on paper. It's a 1.4 inch group. It is what it is. Um, but, it leaves me room for improvement, uh, obviously. So, I think that's, I'm happy with that. I mean, I'm okay with that. I wish I had, like I said, I wish I had that shot back, but, it's on paper, it's scored, it is what it is. Uh, my velocities are a low of 26.36, a high of 26.72, an average of 26.61, extreme spread of 36.10, and a standard deviation of 11.48. Now, um, it's not bad. The velocities are getting on the low end for what I would really like to see for the 90 grain Sierra Match King. Um, it does seem to be shooting okay, but Sierra does have a. Uh, let me put this up for a second. A, I guess, a notification on their 90 grain Sierra Match King bullet that they say they recommend a 1 at 6.5 twist barrel for the 22 caliber 90 grain boat tail hollow point, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in for uh, velocities lower than 2650. Uh, in cartridges like the Valkyrie, where the muzzle velocity is above 2650, a 1 in 7 twist barrel will stabilize the bullet correctly. So Sierra's, I guess, trying to iron out one of the concerns or um, some of the info about barrel twist with this bullet. Well, if you follow the 224, I'm sure you've heard of it. So it's just what Sierra, the data that they put out there. So again, that velocity of a low of 26.36, it's not what they recommend. Um, but Sierra recommends a 1 in 6.5 twist for their 95 grain match king bullet. And I'm shooting that also out of a uh, 1 in 7 twist. So, I mean, we'll see what we'll see. I'm experimenting. That's... Uh, just getting data and I'm putting it out and we'll see I mean, that's all I can do um, not really I guess trying to take a side on it I'm just like I said just trying to experiment see what I can do um, so yeah that's the, the reloader 16 is performing better than the H4350 as far as velocities go and looking across the information I got in phase two with the chronograph and the information that I got in phase three with the chronograph, my velocities are consistent. Um, for the Reloader 16, when I shot my five shot group, I had an average velocity of 2775. Uh, this was an average velocity of 2735, so I'm within 20 feet per second. Seems close. Um, so, the H4350, 
I didn't get velocities on the 26.8 grain sh shots, but I did get 26.4, and they were also in the 2600s, which uh, is, again, what I'm getting here, mid 2600s, uh, the average was 2660 for the 26.4, so, you know, it's consistent. My group sizes are you know, consistent across everything. They are sub MOA minus that one or close to MOA. Uh, again, I think I just shot at the wrong point on this particular uh, round, but again, it is what it is. It's marked on paper, but I like what I see. Uh, there's the potential. I'd rather have a rifle that can outperform me than me outperform the rifle, and that's probably the case, at least right now. So, I do like the Reloader 16, um, and comparing the Reloader 16 to the H4350, there is, again, the H4350 has an average of 2661, uh, Reloader 16 has an average of 2735, so there's about a 70-ish foot per second, feet per second difference in velocities. So. If I can push it faster, I might as well do it. And again, it puts me up in that 2700 range, which is where I want to be for this bullet. So I like Reloader 16. Uh, first time using it with the 224 and the, you know this 90 grain Sierra Match King. Uh, I definitely think these loads are keepers, both of them. Uh, I'm going to write them down in my book of loads. I keep a book of loads of ones that I like, and both of these are going in it. I'll probably load up, when I use the 90 grain, I'll probably use, uh, well, not probably, I'm going to use the Reloader 16, but it's always nice to have another option if you need it. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is maybe, I mean, on my Saturday load development for the 95 grains, my velocities are also that uh, velocity node is lower in velocity than what I would probably like to see for that round. Um, I'm not going to redo it. I'm going to see it through where it's at now. But I might go back after I finish uh, verifying my Saturday load data. I might go back and try Saturday on the 95s with the Reloader 16 and see if I can get my velocities up and get that where uh, I guess I feel I want them to be. So that being said, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you get a moment, check out the Reloaders Network. Um, lots of good information there. Lots of really great people that have tons of information to share. I personally have learned a lot from there. And it's just really nice to have that forum to be able to go and get ideas and learn things and try to... Uh, pick up information to, to improve my skills as a reloader and a shooter. So, I had to come back for a minute. I did not talk about Brass Life, so I'm going to cut this section into the end of my uh, Phase 3 video. So, I did collect all uh, 19 pieces of brass that I shot which is I'm happy about because sometimes that's not the case I do not see anything alarming as far as the way the brass looks there are some ejector swipes on there I believe but those are things that I've seen on the brass for everything that I've shot even the um, factory loads I believe at the 75 grain uh, American Eagles I think I've seen that I wish I had one I wish I'd thought about that and tried to find one prior to so I could prove it but this is just me going off memory so I mean, take the data for what it's worth so I'm not seeing anything that's crazy there um, so we'll decap those and take a look at them throw them into the, uh, I guess, third time fired bin and 
as I collect more rounds in that I'll go through and measure them and add that to my brass life videos I'll be curious to see how that one ends up as well uh, okay so I really think we're done here now uh, appreciate you watching uh, if you have a moment check out the reloaders network I don't know if I'm gonna keep that part from the first uh, at the end of my results video or not but I just wanted to throw that out there great information great people until next time big man's outdoors have fun outside